Hi, I'm Nate the Great. This is my lovely wife, Ty. And today we're going to be talking to you about the five things we learned from King Saul. Come on. Welcome to your five minute lunch break, where we take five minutes out of your day to give you something to snack on, something to chomp on, something for your spiritual elevation. Uh... What you got? All right, um, today we are going to be talking about the five things I learned from King Saul. If anybody, if, if any of you out there know from the Bible stories, Saul was the king before David, and you know, he had a couple of issues going on. So, here we go, let's start it off. Well, number five, number five. If you mess up or sin, own up to it and ask for forgiveness. It's not that hard, people. Um, Saul always made excuses for the things that were going on um, and the mess-ups that he did. He always tried to blame others. If you look at 1 Samuel 15 and 15, um, there was a story there where God told him to um, kill a certain king and everything in that city, kill the livestock, kill everything. I don't want nothing left. God told him to do that. And uh, Saul was like, maybe I can just spare the king and spare the best of the, you know, the livestock and everything. And when Samuel came and said, what have you done? And he said, the people, the people told me to, you know, keep all this stuff. And, you know, they spared the king and they spared the livestock and it, it was bad. So he made excuses and he lied to the prophet. Number four. Boom, number four. The only sacrifice that God wants is an obedient heart. All right, we're going back to the same story where God told Saul to kill everything, kill the livestock, uh, kill the king, and they were waiting on Samuel to get there. And because he made this rash decision, he's like, look, I can't wait. Let's go ahead and offer up a sacrifice to God right now, even before Samuel gets here, uh, which he wasn't supposed to do. Um, and that just goes to show you that you can't pick and choose what you want to obey. If God told you to do something, just do it, people. Number three. Number three. Saul made rash decisions and promises. We're going back to 1 Samuel 14, 24, uh, through, uh, 24, 16 through 22. He made a decree that anyone who touched food before a certain time would be killed. When it came to enforce it, he did not. He rashly offered the sacrifice, not waiting for the prophet Samuel, which I said before, and he made a bad decision by disobeying God and in sparing Agag and the spoils of war. Saul was foolhardy, reckless, and irresponsible, and those are not good qualities for a person seeking favor of God. Okay? So, um, he, he was quick to make decisions, and, you know, a lot of times we face... Um, we face in our lives times where we have to make decisions and we're not willing to uh, set aside time to pray and fast and ask God if these decisions are really good. Am I making the right decision, Lord? Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I take that job? Um, so we should learn that from Saul. We should always go to the Lord in prayer and seek him and find an answer as to what he wants us to do. Uh, with our lives because ultimately he knows what's best for us anyways all right so we want to make sure that our thoughts line up with his his thoughts and our ways line up with his ways mm -hmm. all right what number one two number two number two is be careful what you ask for Saul's name means to ask for one he went to a place to inquire to find Samuel who was dead so he went to talk to a witch witch of Endor and the place he went to was Sheol Sheol means the asking place. So the ask one four, ask four one went to the asking place to find Samuel. Samuel came up from the dead. The witch was shocked. She's like, oh, that never happened before. <laughs> and God sent Samuel. He's like, why are you bothering me? I'm trying to sleep. I'm, I'm, I've done my service to you. What do you want? Saul said, what's going to happen with Philistine? And Samuel said, mm, more or less, you're going to die and all your kids are going to die. And that'll be the end of your reign and the end of your lineage. Number one, the number one reason or the number one thing we can learn from Saul is not how you start, it's how you finish, okay? Saul started out great. He had some hiccups along the road. He didn't repent. 
He disobeyed God. God's spirit left from him. He went to uh, um, talk to a witch, and that was the last straw. And God wiped out the rest of his lineage, including his sons. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're consistent in your spiritual walk with God, if you learn how to repent when you mess up and sin, you will be okay. You will grow spiritually. Get in your word. See God. If you don't want to do that and you want to disobey God, it's not going to be a good look for you in the in long run. And that's the five things we learned from Saul. I am Nate the Great. This is my lovely wife. Ty resurrected. Ty resurrected. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Peace.